Hey, Ken, you got me. And video. Hold on. Oh, come on, video. You cannot start your video because the host has stopped it. Well, unstop my video, man. Oh, wait a second. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Let me see here. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Try it now. See if you can do anything now. Here we go. Oh. Hey, oh. we ooh, got ooh, you. Ooh, ooh, what is this? Let me do uh, USB video. Uh, ooh, no way. That background is awful. What is this? Let me see if I can fix that. Hang on a yeah, sec. I don't have a green screen behind me right now. Oh, that is rough. Let me see. Request will help me. Let's see. Side by side. That's a new one. Yeah, I'm not sure why it's. Uh, Choose virtual sense. background here. Stand by. Okay. Let me see if it'll allow me to put none. Oh, good. Uh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, man, that's that a lot better. Weird. <laughs> yeah. Golly, I, I can barely, I can barely that. see you, man. <laughs> oh, that's hey, that's funny. why we join in early so we get these uh, tech that's exactly things, right. uh, situated. <laughs> that's For so those funny. that are in here, uh, welcome. <laughs> hey guys, <laughs> uh, sorry about that. That was a lot of fun. Um, no, it's funny. It's funny that happened. I was, uh, I was doing a call a couple of weeks ago, and. Um, it was a uh, it was a similar webinar, and the company we were, yeah. we were doing it for did a uh, had a requirement to have a virtual background. So I have a green screen over here that I use for a lot of the digital marketing stuff. Right, and uh, I had put it up on the background, but I didn't know what the background was going to be. So they choose it basically when you sign in. And um, it was it was London at night in the background, <laughs> and <laughs> I was like, <clears throat> of all places, <clears throat> we just got this random picture of London, uh, Paris, just in the background, and uh, oh, it was man. or London, England, in the background, and it was it was just <laughs> why why you it's know so random. It's just the same. <laughs> It's like you guys, you don't even do business in there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And this is the one, like I was anticipating company logo and that kind of stuff, but you know, oh, well, that's cool. Well, that I'm excited about today's presentation, man. Electrical yeah. safety. For those of you jumping on early, I'm telling you, uh, fire safety and fire extinguisher stuff, all well and good. Today, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be electrical safety. So uh, it's uh, be electrifying. Oh, you used it. Oh, I was going to steal your air on that one. Did I steal did. your thunder? Oh, there's thunder. another one. Yeah, yeah. I guess you can't steal air, can you? It's <laughs> possible, air. baby. That's awesome. Oh, well, we got a couple minutes, guys. We'll let, a, let some more people join in, and yeah, and we'll get we'll get started. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a good topic today, let me tell you. Yeah, this is going to be good. This will be this will be very good. We've got um, got a couple stories. I know you got one. I've got one for sure. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah. Hey, by the oh. way, I'm sharing screen. Can are you able to see? Yeah, I can see it. I can okay, see it just great. fine. Yep. Great, great, Looks great. good. Looks so good. We'll a few more people join in here, and we'll we'll get it going. Um, oh man, if you guys hear a child in the background. Uh, screaming at the top of their lungs. I do apologize. It should be a noise canceling microphone, so you shouldn't be able to hear it. But, but she has a set of pipes on her, so uh, might be out of luck. I forgot to uh, mention to you uh, last week's webinar. I forgot to uh, turn my phone off, uh, my soft phone, and it was. Ringing. I don't think anybody could hear it, uh, <laughs> but it was ringing, ringing during the presentation. Thankfully, you were talking. And I was able to, to adjust it, but <laughs> I, I put it on do not disturb today. So oh, that's the worst. It again. always throws you off too. You're presenting. And then oh, if I was talking, like, oh, I'm it sorry, would guys. Hold on. What was I talking about? Yeah. Oh, it would 100% throw me off <laughs> if, it, if I was talking, but I'm glad you were, uh, you were uh, given your, your story. So yeah. Good. 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 All right. Well, it's, uh, it's one thirty-five. Uh, let's go ahead and get this rolling. Uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening to some of you. Uh, <laughs> thank you for joining us on today's uh, webinar. Uh, my name is Ray Walters. I'm going to be your host. I'm also joined by my co-host and local business owner, uh, Mr. Ken Wood. Okay. And uh, we're here to help you step by step in maintaining a compliant practice uh, by providing you with the facts and the solutions through these weekly webinars. Uh, 
last week's topic, we were talking about fire extinguishers and electrical, or I'm sorry, fire, that's today's topic, fire extinguishers and emergency lights. Uh, today's topic, we will be discussing the uh, basic rules behind electrical safety. Um, yeah. It's going to be quite electrifying. And uh, well, you can't use that anymore. Yeah. You can only use that once now. It's done, guys. It's done. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that was five minutes before a good uh, chunk of people just joined in. Okay, so I'm going to use it again. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> but hey, let's go ahead and get it going. Um, <clears throat> and guys, just a little background of uh, Epi Compliance. Uh, we're a healthcare IT company. Uh, we were developed by leading healthcare professionals in 2013. Uh, we have combined uh, knowledge of 40 years in the healthcare regu regulatory space. Um, our mission is simple. We want to help others achieve successful outcomes uh, by providing tailored compliance solutions that fit your business needs. Um, we've also uh, founded Epi Conferences, um, which is it. As of right now, it's an in-person conference that we host here. We're, we're based out of Florida. Uh, we hosted out of Orlando. We recently hosted out of St. Augustine. Mm -hmm. um, but in particular, um, what we offer at these uh, at, at this conference is a uh, HIPAA security officer training program. Uh, this course was designed uh, to ensure that individuals who uh, complete this program have a basic understanding of HIPAA security, HIPAA privacy, and the standards that come with it. Um, this is a course, and the reason why I'm bringing this up, this is a course that we are going to be bringing online soon. This was just an in-person course, um, but we want to bring it online. So any students on this call, any administrators, any physicians, listen. This is another certification, another great resume builder. And at the end of the day, when it comes to compliance, you know, HIPAA is huge. Um, so stay tuned for that. We'll be some more details to follow. Um, but without further ado, let's uh, let's get into the action here. So, um, you know, before we dive into electrical safety, I do want to share some sobering uh, st statistics that I found from the National Library of Medicine. Um, it's they stated every year there's approximately a thousand deaths resulting from electrical injuries. Um, even more alarming, uh, there's 30,000 that are non-fatal. Uh, I'm sorry, 30,000 incidents that are non-fatal uh, that result from shock incidents. Um, and from that, 5% uh, of all of those cases are burn unit admissions in the United States um, that, mm -hmm. again, occur from electrical injuries, um, which is pretty wild. Um, yeah. <clears throat> This is a table that I actually found from uh, the OSHA.gov uh, uh, website. Um, I thought it was pretty interesting. Um, this kind of uh, uh, reflects the amperage range. Or basically, what it reflects is uh, it doesn't take much to, for electricity to cause injury, right? Yeah. And uh, this kind of just shows you, uh, you know, the sensation or the consequences from from experiencing electric shock. And uh, I think, Ken, I think this is where you had a story to share. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I, I do. Yeah, and it's and unfortunately, it's not a, a, um, a happy one, as you'd imagine, talking about this topic. But I, I, I will say, um, I guess this was back in uh, early 2021. Um, my company had just started to um, uh, work on a contract for a, a commercial and residential roofing company uh, based out of Southeast Georgia, and they had some business in Florida uh, as well. And uh, it was probably a month before we had put pen to paper on that contract. Uh, the owner had pulled us aside when we had first come up, uh, and he was talking about the importance of, as you'd imagine, safety in the, in the workplace. And he shared a story. And he was telling us that, uh, and I verified it, thankfully, because sometimes it just tells stories for the sake of them, but I actually verified this. Sure. And um, he had a roof consultant that had uh, gone to a commercial property and was getting ready to sort of inspect the roof for hail damage and just to make sure that when they submit insurance papers that there, there could be some compensation there for, for them to kind of help uh, pay for this roof. So uh, he takes his ladder, which is a high weight aluminum ladder or low weight aluminum ladder. And he unfolded it, raised it, raised it, locked it. Unfortunately, what he wasn't doing was he wasn't wearing gloves, right? There's a reason sometimes uh, roofers wear gloves uh, sure. on their hands when they're using ladders. Uh, this gentleman had put the ladder up against the side of the building. Unfortunately, there was a very high voltage uh, wire power line that was hanging over that commercial building that was supplying um, um, electricity to that entire block area. So it was very high voltage. 
and he rubbed his, uh, he hit his ladder on that, that power line. Uh, and uh, unfortunately it, 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 it killed him. And um, it was a huge, huge hit for their company, which is kind of what led us to coming in to, to sort of help clean up a little bit and, and, and correct the issues that, that sort of had occurred over that period of time and uh, from a bunch of different areas. But it was a, it was a huge hit, a huge hit for that, for that organization. And, and similar to the story of last week where the company had to kind of reassess and, and came close to shutting sure. down, uh, this one didn't have as such a happy ending. Unfortunately, the, the company about, um, I think it was six to seven months after that investigation uh, was found. It was found that, the, that even the uh, investigation found that the ladder itself, the locking mechanism was broken just from the locking mechanism. And, and, and it created this issue. Well, now that company is held liable because you have to inspect your equipment. And I said it last week, and I, and I do want to reiterate this point right before I hand it back over to you. And very quickly, guys, we have to remember, and I'm going to say this as much as I can. OSHA is a very, very heavily funded. And by very heavily funded, the budget for 2024, I looked it up, $738.7 million. They mean business. So if you mean business for your business, it's important to ensure that those box mar those uh, boxes are checked uh, when it comes to this. And I'll mention it a little bit later, but sort of anticipating issues and being ready to address them before they occur is, is going to be key here. But anyway, Ray, I'll hand it over to you. It's just really a story. No, I mean, it's a terrible story, but yeah. I mean, it just uh, goes to show, you know, something like, in, you know, I, I never would expect it. something on the ladder, right? You said yeah. that was of all things. And, then, I, I, and yeah. then you mentioned uh, personal protective equipment as well. Just goes hand in hand, you, yeah. you know, especially insulated gloves. And we'll kind of get into that as well. But uh, no, great shit. Great story. I appreciate you sharing that. And uh, we'll kind of dive into the objectives here of today's uh, webinar, obviously, with electrical safety. Um, we want to identify the major electrical hazards. Um, we want to discuss different types of electrical hazards, uh, explore, uh, obviously, uh, uh, electrical protection and methods. Um, and then, obviously, we want to recognize the OSHA rules, uh, requirements uh, designed to protect workers from these electrical hazards. Um, again, a lot of this information will be found on simply just uh, uh, going to the OSHA.gov site. Um, so uh, this slide here, um, I, again, I found this from the OSHA.gov site, and they kind of define this acronym "Be Safe" by recognizing, acronym. avoiding, and protecting against all of these electrical hazards. So as you can see here, they <laughs> uh, obviously we're talking about burns. Um, uh, does the injuries from contact with hot electrical components that cause skin damage or tissue damage, electrocution, fatal or severe injuries from direct electrical contact, um, shock, uh, which is sudden, often painful reactions to electrical currents uh, through the body, um, art flash and art blast. Um, I've never heard of that actually, Ken, and I, I, I was I, I enjoyed looking that one up. It's a rapid yeah, release of energy during electrical faults leading to light flashes and pressure waves. Mm -hmm. um, so what, <laughs> what ring the a bell in my head is like an overloaded circuit just yeah. going off, right? New fear unlocked, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. Uh, fires, uh, obviously uncontrolled burning of materials due to electrical faults, uh, posing a safety hazard. And then uh, last but not least, explosion, uh, which is violent energy release and release, uh, releases often caused by electrical issues uh, near flammable materials. Um, so very interesting uh, acronym and how they have that uh, structured. Um, types of electrical hazards. So this is kind of the story I want to share. Obviously, you can see the image here of, of this uh, overloaded electrical circuit is what I, uh, what this is. And uh, I hate to say it, um, I don't know, not even in a medical practice, but uh, let's just say visiting a barber shop or anywhere I've seen, you know, and I can say anybody that's been in yeah. this room, I'm sure you've seen something familiar yeah. or similar yeah. to this. Yeah. Uh, this is a huge no-no. Um, you know, obviously I'm not an ocean inspector, you know, but when I've, when I've gone in, I've seen this set up, it, I really do want to want to say something yeah. um, because again this is considered an mm -hmm. overloaded circuit um not good this is uh, obviously uh this is mm -hmm. one of the uh, types of electrical hazards mm -hmm. here and uh um obviously what is the the consequence you know um yep. plugging too many medical device or plugging too many uh uh 
uh, devices into a single outlet could cause overheating, yeah. um, risk of electrical fires as well. And maybe even one of those arc flashes or blast, you know, a um, couple other ones I've listed out here, uh, defective insulation. Um, this is, you know, if you have uh, cables that, you know, the wires are exposed, um, yeah. you know, you want to get those fixed. Right. Um, so, you know, that can lead to exp or exposed uh, wires can lead to electrical shock um, improper grounding, uh, example that I've read, uh, you know, at least in the healthcare space, uh, you know, malfunction mm -hmm. of electrical outlet in a patient room that is not properly grounded, uh, mm -hmm. poses an electrical shock risk, uh, with a patient or a healthcare worker touches it, um, damaged power tools. Um, again, uh, uh, if you're in a healthcare space, a uh, surgeon is using an electrical scalpel, um, with a damaged cord, again, increased risk of shock. Um, overhead power lines, uh, you know, th this doesn't necessarily apply in the healthcare setting, but if you're working around power lines, you know, maintenance workers that are on roofs or near the healthcare roofers. facilities, <laughs> yes, or roofers, yeah. <laughs> uh, come in contact with overhead power lines. Uh, obviously there's a risk of electrocution, um, kind of similar to the, the story that, uh, uh Ken exactly. had shared. And then last but not least, uh, wet conditions, uh, obviously, <laughs> You don't want to operate electrical equipment near sinks or near spill fluids. Um, that increases the risk of electrical shock. Um, mm -hmm. So these are the types of electrical hazards. Um, so this is sort of diving into the rules and requirements. Um, Ken, I think you had, <laughs> I think you had something to share here with your. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Necklace. As you guys are looking at these and just before Ray goes over them, yeah. um, this was this was a topic that, that came up quite a bit here in, in recently in 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 um, I'll put it this way in, in pilot training. So um, I made a few references again last week. If you weren't here for that webinar, shame on you. But uh, if you if you, <laughs> if you if you were, you'll you'll kind of remember this. Um, so about sixteen years ago, um, seventeen now. Wow, seventeen. Um, I had an opportunity to just go and finish flight training and, and all this stuff. And the one thing we noticed about this, and I noticed about this in particular was the anticipation of things failing, the anticipation of things going wrong. So right here in front of me, I have a checklist from one of the airplanes and you'll notice, you won't probably be able to see it on here. Uh, but in the pre takeoff checklist, there's a green letters that says abort plan ready. And on the back, you have all the procedures and, and um, all of the guidelines and all of the checklist items that you have to follow in the event of catastrophic failure. When you're taking off, just before that pre-takeoff, as you're about to taxi onto the runway for takeoff, as a pilot, as a good pilot, you should anticipate that the engine is going to fail on takeoff and that you have a plan to execute safely. OK, a lot of the times what you see pop up on the news and all these different things is because they weren't anticipating the failure occurring and they were thereby were not prepared. Guys, it, it boils down to the same thing with the organization. It, 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 I don't want to say it sounds silly uh, because I hate to be that person that makes things sound as if uh, you have to walk on pins and needles. But the reality is your organization, your company is so critical, uh, both to you and to the clients that you actually serve why not turn an eye towards that safety portion of this, right? Uh, where you um, can run through a scenario in your head and go, you know what, this has even the slightest potential to be an issue. We wanna address that and create a solution, uh, put a stop in place that prevents that from becoming a headache uh, later down the road. So, um, and honestly, it, it could be anything, just like I said, like we were talking about earlier, it could be the locks on a ladder. It could sure. be not having, it could be your gloves having holes in them and not being, you know, um, uh, new or being able to prevent elect electricity current, electrical current from coming through them. There's a bunch of different things in there, but I just wanted to caution everybody as I have to as well is to think as if you were an investigator yourself and say, is there any potential any potential that this issue is benign, as small as it may seem, could create uh, a headache for uh, my valuable business later down the road. And uh, I did want to share that with you guys. Again, it is just anticipating issues and identifying identifying those resolutions uh, really before they become a problem. No, absolutely. Good point, uh, Ken. And, and, and again, this slide, it basically just reflects the same, you know, anticipate the following, you know, um, do not use electrical appliances while touching anything metal or wet, right? A lot of this stuff is, it, it, it's, it's common sense, right? 
Um, but it's often overlooked, you know, um, and, uh, and like Ken said, anticipate, um, you know, lock out and unplug electrical appliances before cleaning, inspecting or repairing them. Uh, keep areas near electrical sources clean. Um, I'll keep water away as well from any electrical yeah. outlets. Right. Uh, make sure all electrical equipment is properly grounded. Um, you know, check with your local utility companies before digging. You know, if you have a new office space or anything like that, you're opening up a new building. Make sure you're, you're you know, you're not digging, digging near uh, buried lines or suspended lines. And then last but not least, you know, and, and again, we sort of uh, talked about this last week with the fire extinguishers, you know, in the event of electrical fire, you know, make sure you have a working fire extinguisher. Yeah. You know, um, so no, great stuff. And uh, um, so, you know, <clears throat> back to, a, you know, a, a recap. Uh, you know, what are the solutions, uh, you know, to these hazards? Um, you know, I always go back to training. And I know we harped on this last week, but in terms of OSHA, um, you know, they want to see that your staff is trained and educated. Is They want to see that, you know, they understand to report, you know, if there is a cable um, that, you know, is loose or not loose, but, you know, is uh, uh, coming unwrapped and, and the electrical wire showing. Yep report that right um they want to see that that's your staff trained educated in those areas um they want to see that you know again equipment inspection you mentioned the ladder uh, earlier um same thing with uh um uh, excuse me i'm losing my my train of thought the gloves insul or insulated gloves insulated, insulated gloves insulated. make sure there's no holes in those stuff like that Make sure you're inspecting your equipment. Um, very important. And even more so, they want to see that, you, or OSHA wants to see that you're logging these things as well. You know, if you have, uh, you know, uh, if you're inspecting your systems, your equipment, um, you know, make sure you're keeping a log. If there's a hazard to report, make sure you're reporting it. Um, and also, even more, more or less, um, you know, when you get the issue resolved or fixed, make sure you're reporting the date that that's fixed, you know. Etc. Anything to add add to that, Ken? No, I, I think that's 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 key. Uh, that last point you made there is log everything, log mm -hmm. log log, or document document document. I think is what our slide last week said. Yes, and that is that is so important. I mean, my gosh, log and date uh, because you know at some point somebody's going to come back and go, oh, really? Can you show me when that was done or when exactly, exactly. was that was that completed? Uh, and and you're guilty if you can't show it. <laughs> Right. So exactly. you want to make sure that you are um, uh, well documented and prepared. So, yeah, agreed. So <clears throat> if you guys are interested in, in uh, advancing your career, learning more about electrical safety and healthcare, healthcare, um, just keep in mind. And, and again, it goes back to the training. Um, if, if you, you know, if you're a student on here, a physician and a business owner, et cetera, you're looking to get your staff trained uh, in electrical safety. We do offer a free resource for that. Um, you can get, and, and again, just so everybody's aware, I will be sending these links out in email to you as well after this presentation. But right here, you can see, you go to epicourses.com. Um, you can register for this course. It's completely free, um, includes electrical safety training as as well. Uh, highly recommend doing uh, taking this course. Uh, uh, very valuable to you, to your business, and uh, you get a free certificate at the end. Um, we also offer uh, paid solutions as well. Again, if you're looking for more uh, uh, of a bundled course that you want to include OSHA as well as HIPAA, privacy, HIPAA security, waste, fraud, and abuse training, uh, we do have a uh, what we call our Epi Compliance Training Bundle for that. Um, again, there will be links sent out in the email to these products. Um, last but not least, if you're looking for something a little more comprehensive, um, I know we mentioned earlier, log things or document, document, document. Um, we do have a program that sort of provides uh, these logs for you uh, for documenting. If you weren't here on last week's uh, topic, shame on you, as Ken said. Um, but documenting, uh, you know, emergency lights, fire extinguishers, docking things, or keeping an inventory of, of all things, uh, all of your uh, electrical pro uh, products uh, or equipment, I, I should say. And then uh, um, last but not least, if you guys are interested in learning more in general, um, you know, feel free to reach out to us. And again, this is going to be sent in email. Uh, we do offer free one-on-one -on -one consultations, um, you know, and uh, you tell us what you're sort of looking for and we'll point you in the right direction. Um, do. Other than that, uh, that concludes our presentation today. And oh, one last thing, 
Uh, as I mentioned, we do these weekly. Uh, next Tuesday's topic is going to be about needle sticks. Um, again, you will receive an email with those details as well. We'll love to see you there. Uh, mm -hmm. Should be interesting. And uh, yeah, appreciate you guys being yeah. here. And uh, we want to open up for just a, a quick uh, uh, Q&A here. Um, we actually ended right on time. Well, That's amazing, isn't it? Almost Last on week, time we were today. like 10 minutes over. Yes, we were. <laughs> uh, we got carried away a little bit. Um, yeah, actually, Ray, if you don't mind, man, I, I got a few questions that came in. Sure. Um, this this first one's actually pretty, really good. Um, it says, and are all, and all is capitalized uh, in bold, <laughs> it says, are all employees responsible for understanding and using electrical safety every day? I'm guessing that means interns as well. So if you can answer yes. that one, that would be good. Uh, well, the answer is, in short is yes, um, including interns. Uh, you know, this includes, uh, you know, them having a general understanding of how to use electrical safe uh, equipment safely. Um, like we talked about recognizing potential uh, electrical hazards, um, knowing what to do uh, in electrical emergency. Um, obviously compliance with these practices are crucial uh, pre from preventing, uh, preventing accidents, injuries, damage to any equipment. And uh, this all just goes back to what I mentioned earlier, you know, the training that we offer, our free resource, explains this in detail. Um, highly recommend uh, taking advantage of that, that resource. Good deal. Uh, another one here is what documentation and records should healthcare facilities maintain to demonstrate compliance with OSHA electrical safety regulations? I would say, I mean, there's a lot that goes into this, but I'd say- Let me top read that one again. Yeah, read it one more time for me. Okay. Read it one more time. What documentation and records should healthcare facilities maintain to demonstrate compliance with OSHA electrical safety regulations? I would say the big three to this response, I'm going to say training records. Mm. Um, again, when it comes down to OSHA, they want to see that you're trained in electrical safety annually, right? And they want you to keep record of, of, of this training with all your employees. Yes, interns can be included, um, but they want to keep record of that. Um, again, goes back to what I mentioned, Epi courses, free OSHA course. You get a certificate at the end. It's a downloadable PDF document. If you're an office administrator, manager, you can yeah. store that on file. Um, and as I mentioned, in terms of what OSHA is looking for, want to see that it's done annually. Um, second uh, answer to that, uh, you know, obviously I mentioned this early, maintain an inventory of all your electrical equipment in the facility. Um, and what I mean by that, keep an inventory of the equipment's location, yep. what type of equipment, um, date of installation, uh, even down to the serial number, you know, um, because again, if there's a problem with that equipment, you want to document it. You want to fix that problem before it becomes a hazard. And you also want to document when that problem has been fixed, because again, this is ongoing. You know, they want to see that you're maintaining uh, um, this inventory log. Mm -hmm. uh, third part to that, um, you know, and again, this kind of goes back to my last point, but, you know, re you know, conducting, you know, regular inspections and testing uh, your your electrical equipment. Uh, and again, keeping log of this uh, yeah. again, when's the last date that you inspected this, keeping, keeping track of that. Uh, who was the person that conducted the inspection? Uh, was there any uh, uh, issues identified and were there any repairs made? Again, this yeah. all goes hand in hand. Make sure that you're keeping a log of this stuff. Very important, especially if it comes down to an OSHA inspection. Love it. Love it. And I, we got one minute. Maybe we can fit this last one in there. Um, what OSHA standards apply to health? Oh, yeah. Okay. What OSHA standards apply to healthcare electrical safety? Well, I, I wish I knew the exact uh, regulation. Uh, here's what I can do. Hang on a second here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post the link to the standard. It's just the general standard. All this information is, is off the OSHA.gov site. This is the uh, standard that I found here. I'm going to share it to the group. Um, oh, awesome. Again, this sort of, uh, it's 19-10.303, uh, uh, which is the general <laughs> general guidelines of uh, ocean electrical safety. Um, 
I think that answers the question. Go to that link. You'll see everything in terms of the general industry and what uh, OSHA requires for, uh, when it comes to that electrical safety. Perfect. Perfect. I don't th think we have any other questions, guys. If you have any other questions, please post it in chat. Uh, if not, Ray, I think uh, I think we ended on time, man. We did a lot better than last week. I will say that we're we're still <laughs> working on this. This is this will be our our second uh, appearance. We got like I said, we're going to be doing these weekly, so we're only going to get better, right? That's right. Exactly <laughs> well, right. Everyone, I, I appreciate your time today. Um, again, electrical safety, vital aspect in healthcare. Um, you know, and uh, obviously following the, the rules and guidelines as we discussed to ensure that your practice is and your and obviously your employees are, are ensuring safety uh, and obviously uh, your patients as well. Um, again, keep an eye out. Uh, we're going to be sending an email uh, with those following links as well um, with the next uh, webinar uh, as well at, with the uh, needle stick safety and proper disposal of sharps. So, nice. um Ken, until next time, I appreciate everybody's time, and uh, we'll see you next week, okay? Thank you. All right, Ray. See you, man. Talk to you later. Sunshine.